Hillary, your point about a national family is really fascinating, actually. And that, I can already tell I'm going to need to reconsider how I'm conceptualizing my next book to, to have that included as a, a point of analysis, because the rejection, the anger, um, the, the denial of enlistment, but also what I think about is the demands that particularly Northern Black women are going to make in places like um, Pennsylvania, Philly particularly, but New York City, New York, when they're the ones that are doing the medical care. They're the ones making sure that the soldiers are getting, um, you know, proper food, you know, like even just like warm water that happens in New York where they can't even shave because the water's frozen. And one could argue, based off what you're saying, is that these women are demonstrating to the nation that we have always been part of this family and we are committed to doing our bit or our part, you know, to use that uh, World War One and World War Two terminology. But this also, the pensions, for example, Black women are there. Right. And, and, and Brandy Bremer's book does, she does this exceptionally well about making, and I think even of Megan McClintock's old work as well about the ways in which black women use the pensions as a way to demand for inclusion in the union or United States in various ways. And that the pensions are pivotal in my opinion, based off their work to really understanding the complexity of the black family to want to be part of, as you point out, Hillary, a national, family, right? And what does that mean when they're not awarded a pension, when they are, when it's taken away, right? Like it's, like you said, it's a messy relationship, but it's it's a deeper way, I think, to understand things. And this also goes out in the plane of the veterans cares with the right. Women's Relief Corps. And it's, I'm like, they're not the only women, black women's groups that are there. Right. <laughs> they are one part. And this is if you extend and think about the churches and the club women's movement. So in some of the rural communities I had, there's only one WRC within the three GAR groups. That's in Carlisle, which makes sense given Carlisle Barracks being there. The other ones, it's the black church group, women's groups and the auxiliary groups of the Mason, the Eastern Stars, the right. uh, Odd Fellows. They are doing the work. And they're even saying to the white members of the WRC that wants to reject them, like, we're still here too. We're taking care of our men as national citizens. Mm. So it's thinking about even the rejection of manhood, but also womanhood afterwards, pensions, but also care, and who's doing that lifting sometimes. Right. And even then, children have a role. So from children to the elderly, we are seeing every family member still having a part mm. and claiming for themselves, we are the nation. Yes. <laughs> and the Southerners who were traitors, they're not the nation. We are the nation. <laughs> and, and children are important because they also are staking that claim. And so earlier, somebody, and I apologize, mentioned identity. And how is the family's identity shaped by that military service? Mm. And I do want to just, uh, an aside, um, there are also a significant number of Black men and women who serve uh, the Union in non-military roles. Mm. And we don't talk enough about those individuals because, of course, they do not have access to pensions later. And so we don't have that wealth of, of information. We have to be more, um, more creative even to find those, those people. But the idea that a child uh, who becomes an adult uh, then begins to interact with the Pension Bureau or the GAR about their father, and they identify themselves that way. My father fought for this nation, yes. right? Um, parents as well, but mm -hmm. I think it's more that the, the widow and the children and, and their lives and their family's identity is forever. And, and I know that, um, that might seem obvious, but again, if, if you look at their actions and they are citizens and they act as citizens and they demand the rights of citizens based on that. I think Kelly, like you're, you're all right, right? This generational identity, you know, long after, I mean, Nina Silver's new book, for example, you know, the world, uh, I'm, I know she also talks about this longstanding like conversations about the civil war and, you know, the new deal era, but I mean, you even see it in pension records. Some of them go, I have some that go into the 1930s, mm -hmm. right? And, and these are grandchildren or, you know, adult children who are basically doing exactly what you said. Do not forget us. One of the most powerful pieces for me uh, was a daughter of a, a veteran who writes to Eleanor Roosevelt and basically says, 
I know in, in this, you know, 1939, I really don't matter in the grand scheme of what the nation is going through, but can you help me? Because my mother has cancer and she needs a pension. And the fact that Eleanor responds multiple times, and the biggest part for me is that she responds within like three to five days. <laughs> I can't get colleagues to answer in two weeks on an email. And the first lady is making responses and demands of the VA to this woman, right? And it's like, what I took away from that is the, the, like you said, the calls, but also how empowered, right? That she says, thank you for that letter you sent last week. Like th that to me almost brought tears to my eyes to, to ways in which she would not let the first lady and the fact that uh, forget and the first lady was invested in trying to help, right? And I think that's always important is even in the, the generational connection, but even in a rejection, there's still empowerment, there's still demands, there's still claims to this, this identity of nation, of family, of, you know, of service. And also too, it's not just that, and because um, of the monument debates, and we talk about memory, these yes. are the living monuments. Exactly. We also wanna talk about the white children, the, the um, UDC and others, these are the black children the, and the kids and the grandchildren and the veterans in their bodies without the money and resources to build a physical monument. They're ensuring that there's a headstone Yes. And at every single parade, they are marching and their children are designated in their own spots. But they will always be remembered by the Black community and through their presence on, by claiming the streets, they're claiming mm -hmm. that community, that identity, and saying, you will see me. You will see my banner. You will see everything else. So that other thing about claiming and the family and intergenerational. So you see Civil War veterans, their children are start taking a very central role in the 20s and 30s in those lines. And some of them are veterans themselves. So you see yes. this long generational military service, but yes. also to a community that respects them because of what their father or grandfather or great grandfather did. Right. It's talked about the Civil War that I think we can really go forward in time if we think about the family and how they're recognizing the claims they're making of community the state and right. the nation 